The high inflation rate, low purchasing power, and shortage of food items have surrounded the U.S. economy, and all this has not just happened with the consumers, but the producers also facing the same problem. Big retailers such as Target and Walmart are facing huge losses in such hard times, and winter is coming, and it might not be the best winter for these retailers. Today's video is about Target, and we will discuss in detail why it filed huge losses and why the retail industry is not performing well. Stick to the end as we dive deep into the case. As we all know, Target's profitability for the second quarter of 2022 dropped by more than 90% compared to the same period the year before as the retailing titan was forced to rely on significant discounts to clear surplus inventory. Target declared net earnings of $183 million in the second quarter of 2022, a dramatic decrease from $1.8 billion in the same period the previous year despite revenue increasing slightly from $24.8 billion to $25.6 billion. Target's thin operating margin of 1.2% in the quarter even lower than the firm's previous expectation of 2% has been ascribed to the dramatic decline in profit as the company marked down prices to get rid of surplus inventory. Target's profit fell by about 50% in its third quarter of fiscal as it cleared out unneeded inventory and sales slowed heading into Christmas, forcing the business to decrease its projections for retailers' busiest time of year. The business also announced that it wants to slash up to $3 billion in overall costs over the next three years, citing the need to become more efficient after two years of strong revenue gains. During the COVID epidemic, the retailer's revenue increased by almost 40%. Target did not indicate how it intends to meet its savings target, although it did state that it has no plans for layoffs or a hiring freeze. The company's stock dropped more than 13% and on the side, shares rose roughly 4% after rival Walmart published a profitable earnings report. Also, if we look at the other side of this situation, not only inflation but Target may have also a $600 million problem with organized retail theft before the end of the year. The Minneapolis-based retailers' executives claim that inventory shrinking is costing them hundreds of millions of dollars in earnings. Inventory shrink occurs when stores have less stock on their shelves than is represented in their inventory. Well, shrinkage can be caused by a variety of factors, including things breaking in the store, employee theft, or even administrative errors, but Target blamed the losses on a single source, organized crime. Along with other retailers, we've seen a significant increase in theft and organized retail crime across our business, Brian Cornell, Target CEO said during the company's third quarter results call. However, missing inventory has cut Target's gross margin by more than $400 million in 2022 compared to last year, and Target expects those profit losses to climb to $600 million by the end of the fiscal year, according to Target CFO Michael Fidelk. Target isn't the only retailer suffering from an increase in systematic stealing. It's a nationwide issue. Retailers have begun to raise the alarm that theft is costing them millions of dollars each year owing to the ease of purchasing and selling products online. Inventory shrinkage cost U.S. businesses almost $100 billion in 2021 primarily due to theft. Retailers polled by the National Retail Federation reported a 26.5% rise in organized retail crime on average. In June, a Target representative informed the Business Journal that the store's entrance was being redesigned as part of a security strategy to combat disruptive behavior in the area around they call it mall. Because of the increased crime, retailers and the government have tightened their belts. California authorities detained and prosecuted nine people in March on suspicion of stealing $135,000 in items from a variety of businesses, including Macy's, Columbia Sportswear, Abercrombie and & Fitch, JCPenney, and Lululemon. And retailers around the country have begun to implement new anti-theft systems. Certain power tools at Home Depot will not work if they are stolen from store shelves and hot items at drugstores are being locked up to dissuade theft. While organized thievery most likely originated in a few geographic areas, we see those rings growing and expanding and the impact continuing to rise, according to Mulligan. A Target representative declined to comment on the precise procedures Target is putting in place to prevent theft in its stores, but said the business is collaborating with law enforcement, politicians, community partners, and retail trade associations to address this increasing national problem. Well, here's how Target fared in the three months that ended October 29 in comparison to Refinitiv consensus estimates. Their earnings per share, $1.54 versus anticipated $2.13, even though revenue is $26.52 billion versus the projected $26.38 billion. Target saw sales fall as families bargained over increasing pricing, making trade-offs between what they need and want, a potential red flag for the holiday shopping season. Customers' price sensitivity increased over the latter two weeks of October, according to Target Chief Growth Officer Christina Hennington. 
Many of the same ideas were repeated by Target and its competitor Walmart. Higher prices for groceries, housing, and other basics are putting pressure on consumers. They are purchasing fewer full-price things and instead waiting for sales. They are picking smaller items, discount packs, or the store's own, less expensive brands to stretch their expenditures. People are also spending less on non-essential items. Walmart also mentioned a decrease in expenditure on clothes, electronics, and other related things on Tuesday. However, the discounter outperformed Wall Street estimates by attracting shoppers with low-cost food. After years of low inventory and out of stocks, big discounts have returned to the retail industry, a dynamic that is affecting firms' bottom lines including targets. The corporation announced that it now expects a poorer Christmas quarter. It anticipates a low single-digit reduction in comparable sales over the next three months and an operating margin rate of roughly 3%. Target did not provide an outlook beyond the Christmas quarter but stated that difficult conditions are expected to endure. As we look ahead, we anticipate that the challenging situation will persist through the holiday season and into 2023, Chief Financial Officer Michael Fidelkson during a conference call with reporters. The retailer made significant headway in cleaning out much of its excess inventory. Its inventory increased by around 14% year-on-year compared to 36% in the second quarter and 43% in the first. However, selling those items reduced its revenues. It also fell short of its target of improving operating margins in the second half of the year. When it cut its profit forecast for the second time, it guaranteed an operating margin rate of roughly 6%, hence it was 3.9% in the third quarter. Target saw higher than expected markdowns, particularly in the closing weeks of the quarter, according to Fidelk. They also spent more on inventory management when the supply chain backlog was reduced, he said. The sector has long urged federal legislators to assist in combating the trafficking of stolen goods. Dozens of retailers and industry associations, including Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, Target, and Walmart. Walgreens recently urged congressional leaders to adopt legislation requiring online marketplaces to authenticate the identity of third-party seller that sells a big volume of items. Target CFO John Fidelk stated that, Target strongly supports the adoption of legislation to strengthen accountability and prohibit criminals from selling stolen goods through online marketplaces. This is an industry-wide problem that is frequently driven by criminal networks, he said, adding that we are cooperating with numerous parties to establish industry-wide solutions. Comparable sales, which analyze Target sales online and in stores, open at least 13 months of 2.7% year-on-year. According to Street Account, this exceeded Wall Street's projections of 2.2% growth. According to Hennington, the company's own brands, which are often less expensive than national names, increased at twice the rate of its whole business in terms of dollar sales. Target's highest sales category was food and beverage, with comparable sales increasing by the low double digits. Essentials rose in the low single digits, supported by pet and health product sales. Udi saw comparable mid-teen sales growth. Nevertheless, Target should be concerned about the sales of their main inventory and sell those items at the right price so that they do not cut down their profits to sell out the items in their stores or else this winter will be the dark one for them. Well, why Target is failing to fulfill their customer needs? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Well, this brings us to the end of today's video. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. And for more such informative videos, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, peace.